This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, welcome to yet another interesting case. He's a 60-year-old male patient who has angle closure disease for which he has undergone iridotomy. But presently, he has this hypermature long-standing cataract. looks to be reasonably dense and uh, these are some folds on the anterior capsule i'm not sure whether is a fibrotic capsule or not uh, the pupil is well dilating but the anterior chamber is relatively shallow and these are his uh, anterior segment pictures currently the pressures are all right and uh, he is posted for surgery now the challenges here are number 1 to deal with capsule which is not really great I'm not certain whether the capsule is very healthy enough and I need to get the rexis right because we are planning a toric IL in this patient. Uh, second would be I'm not sure about the zonular health. Again in hypermature cataracts we expect some amount of zonular laxity and uh, on ZDAP examination however there is no evidence of any fake wood donosis so I expect them to be reasonably good. And finally the nucleus management well if I get the rexis right nucleus management would not be an issue. but in the event where the rexis is an iffy situation then i need to be very cautious with my nucleus management so let's see how things turn out so before i start my surgery i just want to evaluate the angles on the table itself so the cornea is coated with ovd and i place the gonio lens on top of the cornea just to visualize the angles as i can see the angles in three quadrants are closed and they may be open in only one quadrant so Well, it was to be expected in this angle closure eye. The two side ports are made, and uh, the capsule is stained with trypan blue under the air. And well, I was reasonably surprised to see this amount of a fibrotic capsule. It did not look so bad at the slit lamp, but now it looks quite bad. Uh, the challenge is if this fibrotic capsule was in the central part it would not have been an issue at all i could go around it but here the fibro process is almost extending up to the equator on my left side so this is going to be a challenge for me this is not a calcified capsule calcified capsule you can remove the underlying plaque and then do a rexis but this is a different variant and the moment the rexis tear reaches this area we are always going to have difficulty in continuing the tear and there's always a risk of it extending towards the equator or there could be an worsening of the zonular weakness in that quadrant so either way it's going to be a challenge for us so let's see how things are done the main 2.8 mm posterior limbal incision is created the chamber is filled with dispersive ovd uh, to pressurize it the capsule is punctured with a 26 number needle and the flap is raised and using the forceps the tear is begun but time i reach the area of fibrosis my worst fears come true and i can't proceed in that area the moment i try to proceed the tear is uncontrolled and there is always a risk or hint of it running away chamber is refilled with ovd and usually in such situations my strategy is to go from the other way round so using a micro scissors i'm giving a tangential nick to the anterior capsule the capsule is folded and then the tear is continued again as long as the capsule is healthy the tear is good but the moment i reach this problematic area again i can't tear the capsule So if I try to pull it more there's always a risk of the tear being uncontrolled and it can head towards the equator that's the problem So usually in such situations with fibrotic capsules my go to instrument is the vitrector So this is a 23g cutter which I'm using now the bevel is up the mode is IA cut mode irrigation aspiration cut mode and uh, the cutter is held under the capsule and the cutting bigger so the flap is removed now i need to trim the peripheral part let me pause the video here uh, this part is very tricky simple reason is i am working very close to the iris so there is every chance that when i'm trying to cut the anterior capsule i can go in and eat up the iris sphincter as well Now how do you minimize this complication? Well the secret is 
Now this is a peristaltic pump and we have uh, the option of reducing the vacuum and the flow rate. Now look at the flow rate. The flow rate is set at the bare minimum. It's 10 flow rate. So by this, you know, the attraction towards any tissue is decreased so much that it's unlikely that it's going to go and hold on to the iris. So that's the secret. Have a very low flow rate. Of course, the vacuum is kept low itself. But flow rate is extremely critical when we're working with these peristaltic pumps. However, if you have got access only to a Venturi machine, then the only thing you need to reduce is vacuum. Get down to maybe 30 or 40 and then try. By doing so, the cutting is much more controlled and you're going to cut only the tissue which you are desiring to cut and not inadvertently the neighboring tissue like the iris. So by using these parameters, I could do a controlled cutting of the fibrotic capsule, and this is how it is now. So we have a decent sized capsular opening. I can call this a capsulotomy. I cannot call this a capsule rexus because definitely it is not as continuous as a rexus should be. Although it's not continuous, it's reasonably strong enough for me to continue with my FACO. So I'm going to continue with my FACO. The choice of nucleotomy, should I go in for a four quadrant technique or a direct chop? In this case, because the nucleus is reasonably dense and I'd want to eat the core of the nucleus, so I prefer to do the sculpting and four quadrant technique here rather than doing the direct chop. Uh, there is a common misconception that during sculpting, you're going to induce more stress on the zonule, so that might not be the best technique to be used in this case. But I'm going to demonstrate to you in, in this case itself that if you use the right technique, you know, you can sculpt or perform the four quadrant technique even in these uh, compromised capsular bag status. The nucleus is stabilized with my second instrument as the sculpting is begun. I'm using adequately high power so that I don't have to push or nudge the nucleus and the trench is being created uh, very efficiently without pushing or causing any stress in the zonules. The nucleus is rotated and when rotating the nucleus, I'm using the two instruments, both the chopper and the FACO tip so that the rotation is very smooth and less stressful in the bag and the zonules. So as you can see the, the power on my left side, I'm using complete 90% power to sculpt. As you can see when I'm trying to sculpt here, I'm reaching the entire 90%. The nucleus is rotated 90 degrees. An important tip here would be to use both the instruments to rotate. You know, I'm using both the chopper and the FACO tip to rotate the nucleus and the sculpting is continued. There is a sense of a positive pressure, so I'm refilling the chamber with OVD. The nucleus is trying to come out of the bag. I'm just trying to put the nucleus back into the bag and once it is back, I'm proceeding with my sculpting. So as the nucleus is being sculpted to its deeper layers, I prefer to always stabilize the nucleus gently with my second instrument. By you stabilizing the nucleus with my second instrument, especially in such hypermature cataracts where the nucleus will be mobile, the second instrument holding on to the nucleus as we do sculpting is really helpful. Time to do the lateral separation. The chopper and the FACO tip are placed deep in the trenches and cracked and each of these fragments are separated from each other. Now with the fragments being separated from each other, it's time to emulsify one by one. The fragments are pulled out of the bag and emulsified at the level of the rexus margin. And these are the, the settings for the quadrant removal. So I'm using the pulse mode torsional energy to do the quadrant removal.
One ME nucleus is out now. Before redrawing the phaco probe, I am putting in OVD uh, just to prevent sharing of the chamber. The nucleus is rotated and got back to the other side. Uh, this heminucleus is still not broken into two parts. And uh, I'm just lifting up the base of the heminucleus so that the trench area is exposed wherein I can go in and give a direct phaco energy shot so that the posterior plate just cracks. And now we have got two free fragments and then they're being emulsified. As the last two fragments are being emulsified, I get a sense that there is a lot of positive pressure, probably because there's a fluid misdirection. And uh, before coming back again, the OVD is injected into the eye as I withdraw my phaco probe. The cortex would be sticking onto the posterior capsule in a very peculiar way. And sometime, you know, just flushing it to the BSS before attempting to aspirate using the IA cannula would be a good idea. That's what I'm trying to do it here. And as I'm trying to do the cortex aspiration, I can clearly see that the posterior capsule is coming anteriorly and I literally find that there's no space between the anterior capsule and the posterior capsule. And we can see these tiny particles behind the poster capsule. These are all lens uh, particles which have migrated behind the poster capsule into the burger space. And this is a clear evidence that uh, fluid misdirection has happened in this eye, which is to be expected in these long-standing cataracts where the zonular barrier would not be great. So having done the more difficult part of uh, nucleus removal, I should remind myself so that I shouldn't do something stupid at the end and uh, spoil all the effort which has gone in until now. So I just remind myself that uh, let us not be too aggressive in our pursuit of uh, perfection. So I leave a little bit of a cortical fiber there, fill in the capsular bag with the cohesive OVD to maintain some space. The planned toric lens is implanted into the bag here. And before I align the lens here, I need to take care of the OVD, which is both in front and behind the lens. The OVD behind the lens is uh, taken care by lifting up the lens and irrigating it. Finally, when I'm certain that there is no more OVD left, time to close the side ports are hydration. So before I close, I just want to have a look at the angles. I'm very curious to know once the lens is out, what would happen to these angles. And I'm going to put the lens in the same positions where I'd done before the start of the surgery. And we can clearly see, well, this was very gratifying. You can see the angles have opened up significantly and there's no evidence of any synechial closure. So we can see that the pigmented trabecular meshwork is seen in at least three of these quadrants and uh, well that was something to be you know sort of a relief and uh, it also is heartening to see that patient did not have any synechia. So these are the first day post-op pictures there's uh, central colon edema uh, but the chamber is deep and these are the OCT pictures and uh, these are the third day post-op pictures the cornea is cleared off now patient is doing well and the pressures are normal the vision is 612 and is happy. To summarize, I think this was a challenging case in the way that we needed to deal with a fibrotic capsule. And in such a situation, rather than going with a knife and a scissor, which we typically do, a vitrector is the best device according to me to deal with such cases simply because you can trim the capsule without cutting or pulling. So when you're using a forceps, there's always some amount of pull which is exerted on these capsules and especially in eyes where the zonular health is not great, we may induce extra zonular stress and weakness during this maneuver. So the vitrector is an ideal tool for me in such situations. It cuts without causing any stress. Only critical thing is that the vitrector has to be fresh and new so that the cutting is not compromised. The settings obviously, as I told, have to be, you know, tailor-made for that situation. In this case, the vitrector was very close to the iris. So I ensured that the flow rate and the vacuum were so low that inadvertent catching up of the iris was avoided or minimized. And always prefer to work in the irrigation aspiration cut mode. So once the capsule was taken care of, rest of the procedure was not so intimidating. Uh, the I did the conventional four-quadrant technique. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.